Hello everyone, we are here at the Panzer Museum Munster with Tobias, a former Leopard 2E6 scanner. And we'll talk about how to kill T-72s because you were basically trained on how to kill T-72s and T-80s, as far as I know. And a short, um, some words about this T-72. This is the T-72 M1 from the National People's Army, so the East Germany. And it's of course not up to, to modern standards, so there's, there's no explosive reactive armor on it. It also has uh, some mine clearing equipment mounted. So um, the, a more modern T-72 would be like the T-72 B2, right? B3? What, what is the actual variant yeah, and what's the main difference? The B3 is uh, currently. But uh, this one is a T-72 M1 yeah. that is uh, comparable with the T-72A. And the T-72A is also part in this conflict on both sides. For example, Ukraine is using the T-72AV. Uh, and uh, also we saw Russian T-72As and even T-72As with uh, ERA mounted on it, even if they didn't have ERA normally. So ERA is explosive reactive armor. These are the small brackets, right? And if you have the big ones, that's contact five. Usually. The B-1 is equipped with contact one explosive reactive armor, whereas the B-3 has contact five that also provides additional protection against armor-piercing fin stabilized discarding sable. Yeah, and other variants, it's not only Contact 5 and Contact 1. And uh, the big thing is, uh, compared to, for example, T-72M, that's also a thing, the M1 actually has like the same armor as a A, because the T-72M has the same armor as the Ural, basically the first uh, fielded version of the T-72. So uh, this tank is actually a bit better armored than the most early T-72s, but its uh, engine and stuff like this is mostly the same. The vehicle only got heavier. And uh, yeah, to engage this vehicle, that's, uh, as a gunner, you don't care really what kind of tank is in front of you. We're trained uh, to aim at the middle of the vehicle, press the laser button to measure the target, and then you fire APFSDS at the middle of the target of it because you don't aim for weak spots, you only middle of the target. So it's a bit like Starfield AI. It only aims, aims for the middle of the ship. And if for there's the nothing because, there, uh, it's, it misses. Uh, because um, if then the shot goes, for example, 50 centimeters high, 50 centimeters low, you still will hit. And uh, the big difference, with, for example, with the Leopard compared to the T-72 is the mobility, both uh, forward and backwards. I mean, the T-80 uh, compared to the T-72 is at least a bit uh, faster both uh, front and rear, but uh, the strength of the Leopard is the mobility and that you have to use it. That you switch your position after every shot and that you can uh, actually move into the other position while reversing, while the T-72 is forced to rotate and drive uh, with its rear away. And uh, the most uh, well-armed, armored uh, part of the T-72 is the upper frontal plate. Um, um, to clarify here, the T-72 can drive backwards, but generally, it, because it drives backwards so slowly, it did generally tend to turn and drive Yes, we saw it a lot in the footage, yeah, even with T-90s turning around and driving away. And uh, this will expose your rear, that is extremely And your side vulnerable. as well, yeah. And uh, as a tanker, you always want to have the front to your tank, uh, to the enemy. To the enemy, yeah. And uh, that's one point where all these doctrines in the West is aimed like... Uh, forcing the enemy into like a defensive battle that you can like slowly grind them down. And also like the mobility forward of the Leopard 2 is superb compared to a T-72 that you can outflank them and uh, take them out. But the most modern ammunition types uh, will have no problem. If this is like a T-72A or even B3, it will go through. It's uh, the most modern, of, of course, because the Leopard 2 A6 got uh, the longer gun compared to the A4 and to the A5, and this uh, increased the penetration. So, so the, the, the gun was specifically increased to deal with more modern Russian tanks, I suppose. Yes, uh, mainly also uh, we saw not only that the gun itself got longer, like on the A6, but on the A7 we saw also that uh, high pressure rounds were now developed. and. Uh, these high pressure rounds that you can't fire actually anymore from the A4s uh, increase the penetration to an extreme value and uh, they should deal with it. I mean, if you think about the T-72s, like the, the M's and the A's, even the 105 millimeter of the Leopard 1 will penetrate 
upper frontal plate. So when more or less did the development for the A6 and A7 start? So when, when was, was the call for the bigger gun? I mean, the bigger gun was already in the early 2000s, that the 2A5 that came in the 90s was uh, upgraded with the longer gun and with the A7 program. The A7 program was in development in the industrial for a longer time, but it only got accepted into a service like from 2014 on. And I think you know what happened in 2014. For, for those who don't, that was basically the first uh, the invasion of Ukraine with, yes. with Crimean Peninsula and everything else. So there was actually some reaction in Germany to this. Yeah. That was the moment when uh, the first Leopard 2 A7s entered service, only 20, to uh, look at the vehicle, evaluate, look what can change, and uh, the finished result is now the A7V that we can see in the German army. And, and of course, I mean, the longer gun doesn't make sense for, for counterinsurgency because you don't you don't encounter seriously, you don't fight any, any main battle tanks that are really modern, so it seems like this may makes the most sense. Yeah, you need uh, the mother velocity, it's one of the aspects that you need for penetration, and the second one is the length of the rod that is going through the armor. The more length uh, it is, uh, the better it is. And there's also one problem of the T-72s, T-80s and T-64s, uh, due to the two-part ammunition that is in the outer loader, you have a maximum length, and this is way shorter than the maximum length of a Leopard 2 because you have a single part ammunition that you yeah. can put in and uh, this wouldn't fit into the outer loader of the T-72. So that, that's another drawback of the outer loader. Now, in, in terms of, of training, so your, the, what would be more mostly, or if was there in training that you said, okay, the most dangerous enemy is this tank? Was it the T-80 or, or how was this done? I mean, uh, we obviously only trained on simulators against the uh, T-80s and T-72s. I mean, there are some T-72s in NATO countries that are available for trainings, but um, most of them already got you now sent to Ukraine and getting replaced with Leopards as well. But uh, the most dangerous vehicle uh, NATO was afraid of, I mean, you can also see it in regulations and talking since the Cold War, was it the T-80, because the T-80 was powered by a gas uh, engine and gas turbine, actually and its mobility was more comparable to a NATO tank compared to the rather slow T-72s or T-62s or T-64s, that you have like this mobility advantage. And uh, also one uh, interesting thing, uh, the T-80 actually has the same autoloader like the T-64, but the T-72 has a different system. And the autoloader of the T-80 and the T-64 loads faster. And, and was there some distinction made between the, the T-80 variants? Because, I mean, a regular T-80 is quite different to a T-80U, which is heavily um, upgraded. It depends on what you say as a regular T-80. These regular T-80s were only a handful and they got phased out. So the most common versions were the T-80B and then later the T-80BV that was like with this error that you can see with the contact one error. That's like the small bricks yeah. everywhere. It looks rather similar to a T-64 BV. You can distinguish them uh, frontally on the position of the infrared uh, searchlight. And the uh, T-80U was done uh, with newer ERA. You can also see that like, there's like rubber on the turret on the ERA to reduce uh, the shadow of the overhang. And uh, T-80Us were actually also the first uh, Soviet tanks that uh, received thermal imaging modules. So that, that was was basically the most dangerous enemy for you? Basically, yes. But uh, we didn't decide it between T-80 BV, T-80 U, it's, it's a T-80, because uh, it's a main strength compared to the other tanks, it's the mobility. And the other point is the gun and it's... So in, in combat you would just shoot until basically your head explodes. And you until the turret flies off. Yeah, so and you wouldn't distinguish, okay, it's whatever it is. I mean, you, um, also, you also have like uh, the differences between bekämpft and uh, zerstört basically that you engage the target and that you destroyed it. For example, if you, um, several targets are attacking you, that you fire at it, you see you hit it, it stopped moving, but it didn't explode, it didn't start fire, maybe it's just smoking. So you start and en keep engaging other targets, but as soon as you have time, you try to finish it off to make sure... It gets completely destroyed. Yeah, because uh, only a burning tank or exploded tank is actually destroyed. Okay, so now some people probably get, are going to ask what are we holding here. 
So this is a, basically a mechanism to detonate tilt rod mines. So had mines before magnetic mines were, were put in large fashion. There were some tilt rod mines, they had a rod out there. And since this vehicle cleared a bit the lane for it, and had of course to protect the hull because the, if the rod would engage with the hull, it would explode at shape charged and damage or destroy the tank. So this is what we're holding on. I think it's a key, key MT free mine clearing plow or whatever it's exactly called. Anything else to add here from your side? Not much to add. Okay, then thank you very much, Tobias. Thank you to the Panzer Museum Monster for inviting us. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.